afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Knight Frank, JLL, and the Barclay Group, we hope all of you are keeping safe and well, and thank you for taking the time out to join us for today's webinar. So COVID-19 has had a profound impact and caused multiple, a multitude of challenges across world economies, cutting across all asset classes. And in response to this, we've seen unprecedented levels of government spending and interest rate cuts to underpin and support markets. Amidst these uncertainties, investors have naturally adopted defensive strategies, gravitating towards safer assets as seen in gold markets, with some looking to increase their capital allocation into real estate in established cities such as London, in hope of reducing portfolio risk with income and wealth preservation key priorities. So in today's presentation, I'm joined by my colleague Jay, who will provide insights into the current state of the London residential market, following which Clarice Lau from JLL will introduce an exciting new opportunity, 12 Trees Park, a brand new London development by award-winning developer, Barclay Homes. With us today, we also have Whittier from JLL and Rob Willis from Barclay Group for a Q&A session right at the end. Today's presentation will hopefully identify some important elements when considering a London investment property. Where are we in the overall cycle? Accessibility and infrastructure, proximity to rental catchment areas such as business districts, overall development offering and pricing. Should you have any questions throughout, please feel free to post them using the Q&A chat box in the top right corner of your screen. So without further ado, I'll now hand over to Jay. Hi, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jay from Nightfair International Project Marketing. Hope everyone is keeping safe and well, and thank you for taking your time this afternoon to attend this webinar and we hope you will find this session useful and insightful. I will be sharing with you an update on the London residential market and what is happening on the ground today. Also, I will be highlighting the difference between today's pandemic and 2008 global financial crisis and how the market will emerge from the current situation. First of all, let us take a look at what is happening to the London, res what is happening to the London residential market before COVID-19. Before the start of the pandemic, house prices in London and the whole of UK has already started to bottom up and show signs of a shallow recovery. The market has been corrected due to Brexit and all the tax changes, and the house prices has been repriced. We are looking at a 12% difference as compared to the market peak back in 2015. For buyers and investors, it will mean that you are entering at a correct entry price today. Next. Let us analyze the demand and supply dynamics of the London property market. London is facing a housing shortage crisis. The target set by the government is 55,000 new homes every year to meet the demand. But every year, house builders are unable to meet this target. There are not enough new homes in London before, during and after COVID-19. Many will also compare the current COVID-19 pandemic with the global financial crisis back in 2008. But what is the difference particularly to the London property market this time around? The following chart shows the price growth in the most recent five years period leading to the GFC back in 2008 and the current COVID-19 situation. As you can see, the property price growth for the whole of UK and the London market leading to the GFC is so much higher as compared to this time round. The market is booming before the GFC struck, but this time round, we have not really seen a strong price growth in the past five years. In fact, the market has been repriced and the potential to increase more is now. Okay, the following chart is showing the number of new buyers and new sellers in the market during the crisis and how it is different between the GFC and COVID-19. The last time round during the GFC, there was a huge increase in the number of sellers and, and this is largely due to the fact that the, there is high interest rates during that, that period of time, causing a situation where there are many false selling in the market. Supply was so much higher than demand, which eventually leads to a house price decline. This time round, it is very different. We have not really seen any false selling situation and transactions are still happening on a daily basis. This is largely due to the unprecedented support by the UK government this time round and interest rates remains very low. 
Having said that, let us take a look at the property price index of London. As you can see from the chart here, London property has shown a very strong track record with dealing with all sorts of crises, from the dot-com bubble burst, the 911 attack, the 77 London bombing, the GFC, and most recently, the Brexit in 2016. London property has always been able to recover fast and perform well. Unemployment rates this time round will remain low as compared to the GFC in 2008, largely due to the unprecedented support by the UK government, which is not seen in the GFC the last time round. If I can bring your attention to the chart on the right, the interest rates has been low for the past decade and will continue to remain low. This will provide a very stable backdrop for the housing market. It is definitely not a rerun of 2008 and the property market will come out faster this time round. Here are three different economic forecasts on how the UK GDP will look like, done by the Oxford Economics, Capital Economics, and the Office for Budget Responsibility. What you can see from the pattern here are very sharp decline during this period and subsequently followed by a sharp increase towards the end of 2020 and into 2021. This year, of course, uh, we are expecting a 38% fall in terms of sales volume as compared to 2019, a total loss due of 466,000. However, these figures we have to say are overly pessimistic as we have not taken into account the recent stamp duty holiday, which will act as a catalyst to stimulate the market. However, pent up demand will continue to build and will start to release once everything is back to normal, which we are already seeing on the ground today. We are expecting a total of 1.39 million volume of sales in 2021. Okay, the following slide just shows what is happening on the ground today. When the market reopens on the 13th of May, we experience a huge increase in the number of inquiries through all our night friend mediums, even higher than the post UK general election back in December 2019, where we experienced what we call a Boris bounce. We see in the niche chart here that the demand has really rebounded as compared to the seasonal pattern where we typically see a fall in terms of transactions during the summer period. But we will not be seeing this pattern this time around. It is definitely not going to be a normal summer for the London property market. In terms of price, Crisis bargain hunters may be disappointed by what's happening in the UK property markets. Discounts are still being negotiated due to COVID-19, but sellers are hardening their resolve as demand grows faster than supply. The number of new prospective buyers registering with us was 94% higher than the five-year average at the end of July. The increase in the number of sellers was only at 54%. This same imbalance can be found inside and outside of the capital. What is happening here is a release of pent up demand that has been building for years against the backdrop of Brexit, tax changes and tighter lending rules. In fact, prices are firmer than they were a year ago, based on the level of offers made and accepted. In terms of the impact of prices in London during the lockdown, the discount achieved based on the asking price and sold price has narrowed from 5.6% during the lockdown period to just 4.3% after the market reopens. There is still a discount, but it is getting smaller. Okay, this chart really just shows that the currency discounts still remains for all overseas buyers. For Singapore, so for Singaporean buyers, we are looking at a discount level of above 25% as compared to pre-Brexit four years ago. It's a very huge discount margin by historical standards. So in summary, the London property market went into COVID-19 in a very different place as compared to the GFC back in 2008. 
the unemployment rates are less severe, interest rates environment are very different. The demand and supply dynamics in the London property market are also very different from that back in the GFC. Most importantly, the market has been repriced and underneath the surface, the London property market remains very busy with transactions happening on a daily basis. I will end off my presentation uh, with this slide to show the key drivers of demand for London properties and why London continues to attract property investors worldwide. On the micro level, London has the fifth largest GDP in the world. And in terms of language, infrastructure, time zone, education system, which provides the human capital for its workforce, here are just some of the many reasons why London continue to attract investment and will remain as the capital city of the world. Coupled with the fact that we are in a low interest rates and low pounds environment today, it really provides investors with a good window of opportunity to enter the London market. Thank you. That's all for my presentation. If you have any questions, do feel free to reach out to any one of us. Now, let me pass on to Curris to run you through the most highly anticipated launch in London, 12 Tree Parks at West Ham. Over to you, Curris. Thank you, Jay. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Clarice Lau with JLL Singapore. Pleasure to have you join us this afternoon. Without further ado, let's talk about 12 Trees Park by Barclay Group. This development is located between Canary Wharf and Stratford, a zone two and three area next to West Ham Station. It is ideally placed for commuting to city with five transport lines overlapping, making this one of the best connected developments in London. With this, we will see West Ham become an integral part of the wider transformation of Stratford. So what was there before? It was a former 10.6 hectare site of sorting office and depot for parcel force now transformed into a mixed use development. This will include a linear park stretching across the heart of the site. There will also be retail and commercial space within the development. So you can easily wine, dine and grab your everyday necessities from your doorstep. Also, a community hub at the entrance making this a well integrated mixed use project. Next, I will touch on key reasons to buy at 12 Trees Park. So we've discussed briefly earlier its location. We will further elaborate on transport connectivity, investment potential, Barclays brand and its place making vision with quality mix of homes. With this development, you have excellent direct access built to West Ham Station, which is within a few minutes walk. Evergreen Point is the first block to launch in this development and also one of the closest blocks to benefit from the proximity to train station. It has excellent connectivity with five lines serving east to west with District, Hammersmith and City, Line and, Cross and National Rail. For north to south, you have Jubilee Line and DLR. With Jubilee Line, it brings you to Stratford one stop away in three minutes, which is also where Crossrail will be opening. With Canary Wharf, which is two stops away in seven minutes and Bond Street in 22 minutes. With District and Hammersmith and City Line, this brings you to the city, Algate East in 12 minutes, Liverpool Street in 16 minutes, Temple in 22 minutes, of course, Covent Garden and Harrods in about half an hour, and not forgetting, with National Rail, you'll be at Heathrow in 47 minutes. Further to that, you have world-class education accessible at your doorstep. 12 of the top 100 universities in UK, such as LSE, King's College, and UCL, can be reached within 30 minutes from 12 Trees Park. That's really convenient. You have LSE in 18 minutes at Holborn Station, King's College London in 22 minutes at Temple Station, UCL in 29 minutes at Euston Square Station. So, what this means for you as an investment opportunity? With house price growth in Newham expected to be among the highest in London, coupled with the wider Lower Lee Valley experiencing a renaissance right now, 12 Trees is a solid long-term investment for buyers looking for value in the capital. 
As an investment opportunity, you have access to a pool of tenants working in city located about 15 to 20 minutes away, where there are about 1 million employments, with three quarters of the jobs are in financial, professional, and associated business services sectors. You have Canary Wharf, seven minutes away, which has over 100,000 working professionals, and this number is expected to double over the next decade. You also have South Bank area in about 13 to 20 minutes, as well as Advanced Business Park located 10 minutes away in the east. So with such an accessible location for both working professionals and students, 12 tree spots will complement the growing transformation of East London, bridging the gap between Stratford, the Olympic Park, and Canary Wharf. So now let's talk about the key features in this development. There will be approximately 4,500 bicycle spaces for residents, with about half the site dedicated to green spaces, that's 5 hectares of public realm, 4.5 acre of Wi-Fi enabled park, 25,000 square meter of retail and commercial space, a community centre, and a state-of-the-art 1,000 pupil East London Science School will call this 12 Trees Park their new home, which includes a specially designed science garden with an outdoor lab, physics garden, a sports hall and a lecture theatre. Now, that's a well-rounded development. 12 Trees Park is a master plan of 15 years, bringing 3,800 new homes, and we are at the very first launch of Phase 1. It is one of the fantastic buildings offering panoramic views across London, Stratford and Canary Wharf. Located at the entrance to the park, as you can see here, it is close to Community Hub with direct access to Westham Station being your get gateway to city. So, Berkeley is well known for its placemaking vision. 12 Trees Park is set to be a blueprint for healthier, balanced living in the city. So this 4.83 hectares of site-wide open space enables people to be close to nature, encouraging active outdoor lifestyles, providing places to relax, reflect and restore. The 4.5 acre linear park is a focal point for people to meet and socialize with restaurants and cafes spilling out into the park. This forms a part of a new shopping and leisure quarter at the development. The on-site community gardens and science garden offer residents flexible space for activities, from gardening to education, group meetings, and perhaps parties. So this is an ideal space, I would say, for anyone looking to live a balanced city lifestyle whilst being so accessible to the city in 20 to 30 minutes, perfect for working professionals, family, and students. So here we are at the first release of Evergreen Point um, at 33 stories, bringing 205 homes comprising of studios, one, two, and three bedrooms, not forgetting penthouses. Prices are from £485,000 onwards for a one bit as of yesterday. So don't miss it while you are now early into the development. From the master plan layout here, we have indicated or shown you where Evergreen Point is. It is a short walk away from the train station with unblocked views of London, Stratford and Canary Wharf on higher floors. As for the resident facilities within this building, there is 24-hour concierge, gymnasium, residence lobby, screening room and business lounge of course with co-working area and open meeting room, which are essential nowadays as we observe working from home being a new norm. This pretty much sums up all that you need for convenience, work, play, and accessibility at your doorstep. There is also a private resident-only garden for private and intermediate blocks located next to Evergreen Point, as shown here. So next, I would like to highlight a special feature for this block. So there are premium upgrades available for the one-bed layout. At £30,000 for a one-bed plot, you are able to upgrade to a two-bedroom. This allows you to achieve a two-bedroom for just about under £680,000. Considering a two-bedroom is starting from £715,000 right now, that's fantastic value to both investor buyers and homeowners. So this applies for type 05 on level 4 to 9, um, for type 02 and 04 for level 11 onwards. So the next slide shows the variation of the upgraded two-bed layouts from one bed this is the O2 stack, so it's very neat, 
um, very nice layout. And this is the O4 and O5 stack, very efficiently sized as well. So there are also four color scheme uh, choices available for your choosing, maple, birch, sage, and juniper. My favorite will be maple. So this is a highly anticipated launch. If you would like to explore this opportunity further, go for it. We have virtual, tool, virtual tools available for virtual viewing. So do reach out to your respective sales consultant to schedule online virtual viewing with you as we are able to walk you through the development and showroom via the interactive system in place. The sales and marketing suite is also ready on site in London. It is located a short walking distance from West Ham Station. If you would like someone in London to check it out for you, feel free to reach out to arrange an appointment with us. So next, I have Rob to speak on the Barclay brand. Rob, over to you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us here today. Uh, my name is Rob from the Barclay Singapore office. I'm just going to explain a little bit about Barclay and who we are as a developer in London. Uh, ultimately, the Barclay Group is London's largest developer, uh, building over 10% of all new homes last year. One of the key benefits of the Barclay Group is its financial position. We're a FTSE 100 company, which ultimately means we're one of the biggest companies, 100 companies in the UK. But what is important is with over 70 sites in the capital, all under construction, we have zero gearing and zero debt and over £1.1 billion in the bank. What this means is an international investor investing from 10,000 miles away is that you can have confidence that the developments that we say we're going to build, we are going to build. We have a very strong balance sheet and over £2.19 billion in forward sales for the next three years. So in terms of you know, what we do, regeneration projects are very much at the heart of what we do at the Barclay Group, taking complex sites and transforming them into places and mixed use developments where people want to live and call home. What this means is we create places that are fantastic, but also we always see a significant increase in price. And we've done this time and again, north, south, east and west across London. You can see here from these four graphs, four of our biggest regeneration projects in London currently under construction. Somewhere like Royal Arsenal, which in 2011 was around £400 per square foot. We're now achieving well over £800 per square foot. It's a, over a 100% increase in values over the last nine years. Same at Woodbury Down in Zone 2, where we went from £500 a square foot up to nearly £1,000 per square foot. which We saw a 96% increase. And what we really see is how regeneration adds value beyond market conditions. For example, in it would be down in Hackney, the average increase in prices for the overall area was 44% in that same time period. So you're adding an extra 50% due to the fact that regeneration is really bringing um, you know, the area up and creating places that people want to call home. Finally, it comes down to the customer service that we offer at Barclay and the Barclay brand. Ultimately, 98% of our customers would recommend us and we, have and we have customer service at the forefront of our business. Hence, having six global offices in Dubai, Singapore, Bangkok, Hong Kong, Shanghai and Beijing. These are here to essentially provide you any answers to any questions you may have or ultimately open for a chat anytime. On top of that, you'll have a dedicated customer service manager from day one, from today, until ultimately two years after your property is completed. You know, they're there for any snagging issues, or if you're in London between now and the completion dates of developments, they can take you around. You can also have a choice of your customer, uh, sorry, of your finishes of each apartment as well, which your customer service manager will take you through. So that's just a little bit about the Barclay brand. Uh, and now we'll open up the floor for questions on the development and of course the market. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am Widya, Head of International Residential at JLL. I am your Q&A moderator today. Firstly, thank you to all the presenters for the insights and info sharing. Um, we have received a couple of questions already, but there is still time to submit your questions in the Q&A box 
and we will do our best to address as many as we can today. Uh, we have a good variation of questions actually on the markets, investments and the project. So thank you for those who have submitted. So let's begin. I guess the first one, um, um, Jay, you could answer. Will COVID-19 have an impact on housing supply moving forward? Great, thank you, Vidya. Yeah, it's a very good question. So the lockdown in UK starts from end of March 2020 and also means that all construction activities were stopped before the market reopens on 13th of May. So as mentioned in my earlier presentation, there are not enough new supply coming to the market to meet the demand before, during and after COVID-19. The annual target set is 55,000 new homes and home builders are unable to meet this target every single year. And based on our latest research, this year we, are, we will be experiencing a 30% decline in terms of supply as compared to last year, which is not helpful to the housing shortage crisis that London is facing. And also another thing to note is that uh, COVID-19 and all the restrictions, the supply chain for the construction materials were also interrupted. Cost of construction will increase and this will highly likely be reflected in the prices of property moving forward. Thank you, Jay. Perhaps you could also answer the next question. How do you see the recent announcement of stamp duty holiday affecting the market in the lead up to 31st of March 2021 and after? Okay, thank you, Vidya. Uh, this stamp duty holiday would provide a welcome financial relief for millions of people, including first time buyers. We have already seen an increase in the number of transactions for property that are completed or are completing soon. It is a catalyst for the housing market and this is to prevent buyers from, from putting plans on hold and losing the momentum that has been built since the market reopened. More transactions are definitely good for the property market and they have a far reaching benefits for the wider economy by improving jobs and social mobility in particular. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Um, next question is on regeneration. Uh, what are the advantages of buying into a regeneration development? Perhaps Clarice, you would like to take that question? Thank you, Vidya. Sure. It will be an early mover advantage by buying early in phase one of the development to benefit from potential capital growth from the start as the master plan and regeneration of its surrounding areas being realized to completion. London's population is expected to reach 11 million by 2050. So as highlighted by Jay earlier, London is currently experiencing shortfall of supply below its 55,000 annual house building target. Therefore, we do observe that this is this is a good opportunity in itself as housing will be in relatively finite supply. Further to that, Barclay has also proven track records with property value growth of its regeneration master plan and its surrounding area over time. Thank you, and yes, indeed. So as a representative from Barclay Group, um, Rob, uh, maybe you would like to share with us why, there's a question on why uh, Barclay identify this location for their next regeneration project. Mr. Rob? Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks, William. Um, I mean, ultimately, when we look for regeneration sites, we want, you know, infrastructure to be there or the opportunity for future infrastructure to be there. Um, you know, for example, with Royal Arsenal, you've got um, Crossrail coming. Here at West Ham, you've ultimately got one of the best connected stations in London that gives you fantastic access to universities, to workspaces, to entertainment facilities, but there ultimately has been quite industrial in the past. Um, and ultimately, what we're going to create here is a fantastic new community that's going to be in between the sort of the high rises and an expensive area of Canary Wharf, and also the regeneration of Stratford, and ultimately completely going to redefine East London. Sounds exciting indeed. There's actually a couple of questions with regards to the master plan. So um, um, this would be for Rob. Um, the first one would be, could you... Tell us a bit more about the hub and what this space will be. 
uh, the retail units within the development for sale or for lease only. And then to lead on to that question, what will be the tenant mix for the office and commercial buildings in the, uh, in the project? Sure. Um, in terms of the hub, I mean, ultimately what we've experienced through our other regenerations is community is very much at the heart of what we do and what we build when you're creating these new places. So the hub is going to be an area that will have retail and restaurants, for example, looking down the 350 metre park and a place where people on the development can come together, eat together. Um, but we're also going to have an entertainment space where we'll hold quarterly or bi-yearly events to try and integrate everyone together, get to know your neighbours and have a place where everyone can come to meet together. In terms of the sort of commercial and retail that we have on the, on the development, um, we're going to have a vast array of retail opportunities. I think in phase one, it's very mu much going to be focused on convenience. So we're going to um, incorporate the supermarket, dry cleaners, lettings and estate agents, and essentially make it that, you know, the convenient one-stop shop that you want it. But as we open up the park and all the retail comes, essentially a new high street will be um, generated on the development. So there'll be various different other types like clothes stores um, and restaurants and everything like that. So the, the development will very much be um, a, a self-sustainable one-stop shop development where you can get all of your day-to-day -day needs uh, adhered to. In, term, in terms of the commercial units um, and the commercial space and the office space that we'll be building, um, I mean, of course, this is open. Um, you know, we can't guarantee who will be there, but considering the area, it will most likely be in the tech or the, the finance area. Um, and that's really where we'll be looking. In terms of whether or not it's leasehold or you can own them, um, initially, it's all going to very much be on a leasehold basis. And this allows us to ensure, you know, certainly that we're incorporating companies um, and, and retail outlets that are in keeping with our vision for the scheme. Thank you. That is very comprehensive indeed. But don't worry if you guys want to know more, do come and reach out to us privately. I think there's a lot to talk about this development. Um, OK, so. This question, I think, is from someone who is really interested to find out about the investment opportunity. What, how much would it cost to get into the development and how has the response been so far, Rob? Uh, the current starting price is 465,000, uh, which would be for a Manhattan apartment on the 14th floor. Uh, but we've got a one bedroom apartment at 485,000, for example, on the fourth floor. So there are current sort of entry levels. But of course, it's changing on a daily basis. Um, it has been extremely well received already, um, having sold about 50% of the tower. Um, so the opportunities are, are going quite quickly, um, which is great to see. And I think you know, Barclay has a very strong track record of phase one redevelopment schemes um, and the demand for this area and the demand for housing in the UK has been very strong. This is both from the UK market and, and our UK marketing suite, as well as our international offices as well. Thank you, Rob. I think I'll give you a break and ask um, the other panelists a question. Uh, perhaps Clarice, uh, what is the estimated rental yield in this area? And secondly, with the current pandemic, what would be your advice on unit type or size now that people are perhaps working from home? Thank you, Vidya. In terms of rental yield, I think we are observing observing about three to four percent in this scheme. Um, as for the type and size of a unit, I would suggest a one bed with the premium upgrade for couples looking to transition with a small family. Perhaps this is ideal and also provide fantastic value for investors and homeowners. Otherwise, a two bed for investment rental does provide good value per square foot with its efficient size and layout. And the rental yield estimated? Oh, the rental yield estimated it's about three to four percent. I guess I, when I addressed it, it was on me. It was me. Thanks. Okay, so next question. Um, perhaps uh, for Mr. Rob, what are the future plans for the site adjacent to 12 Trees Park? Uh, where are the Barclays future sites and what are the plans in the vicinity? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, London has a huge undersupply of housing, as we've already addressed on a number of occasions in this in this webinar. Uh, and East London has certainly been identified as an area where we can try and uh, catch up some of that um, supply that is so desperately needed. Um, so we actually own uh, through the St William part of the Barclay Group, the adjacent site at the end of 12 Truce Park, uh, which essentially will continue the regeneration of this area. We also own another site in Poplar as well, just to sort of the south of the development. Um, so there's quite a lot of, uh, of future uh, regeneration, future growth and future change coming in and around the immediate area, which is very exciting. Um, I think there's a um, separate question, but it's a lead up to what you've just shared. Um, someone is asking, what is the overall period on the regeneration plan? So the regeneration itself will take 15 years in total. Um, but you know, having said that, with phase one, um, which is essentially going to be starting completion from Q4 2023 until about 2025 Q1, um, we're going to see over 65% of the park come online. We're going to have uh, commercial units, retail units, um, all going to be uh, presented in phase one. And then you'll continue to build further into the future as we get further down, essentially, the linear park that you can see there in front of us. OK, um, understand 40% of this project will be affordable housing. What is the impact of this to the investors? Uh, Mr. Rock? Yeah, uh, so uh, the affordable housing element of the, of the site is about 12%. Um, we then have what we call shared ownership, which is a first time buyer scheme uh, to help uh, essentially young professionals in living and working in London get onto the housing ladder. Ultimately, they become fully private as and where they paid the full percentage of the home, um, having had a loan from the government. And then there's an element of private rental sale um, also on the development as well, which is essentially going to help the rental market and the demand for housing in London currently. On that rental market, there is a question. Is rental impacted by Brexit uh, for our professionals and COVID-19 uh, for students since many foreigners are forced to go home? I, mean, I think there's definitely been some effects on rentals with regards to the student rental market in London and, and people having to move home. I think ultimately, you know, the plan is very much to start opening up as of September and getting people back into schools, universities um, for the next um, next year, essentially. Um, so I think it's what we'd say is a very short term effect. I mean, essentially, um, you know, all the workers, everyone still living in, in London, essentially, is still very much there. Um, but Evergreen Point doesn't complete until Q4 2023, um, moving into 2024. Um, by that stage, we're going to be far beyond COVID-19. Um, hopefully, we'll be very much back up and running. Um, and, you know, as Jay said, you know, if, if completions are 30% down this year and starts are 30% down this year, um, you know, we're going to continue to be significantly behind um, the, the demand that we require to build housing in London. Um, so, for a short term perspective, perhaps, um, certainly on the on the student side of things, in terms of the um, you know, professional side of things, everyone still needs to live, you know, still ha need to have their home in London. But from the student side of things, certainly on the short term, there may be a little bit of an impact, uh, but in the long term, and, and certainly for 12 Trees Park, I don't see it being an issue. Thank you, Rob. That's uh, well answered. Um, there are also questions from the floor with regards to the um, um, the offering. Uh, what would the price of the one, two, and three bit be, and the price per square foot? So essentially, right now, uh, you know, our Manhattan apartments start from four hundred and sixty-five thousand pounds. Um, our one bedroom start from four hundred and eighty-five thousand uh, pounds. Our two bedroom from six hundred and eighty-five thousand uh, pounds, and our three bedrooms from eight hundred and thirty-three thousand five hundred. So, uh, in, you know, generally the pound per square foot. You know, it depends. You know, how high up in the building, what size apartment that you buy. So, so it does change. Um, but you're looking between sort of generally about late seven hundreds to high eight hundreds. Okay, 
That's very exciting. And like our, as we've mentioned, if you want to know more, don't forget to contact us and we'll share um, the information with you. Uh, oh. Yeah, I, I, I guess the next question is when will apartments start being available? I suppose um, maybe we can address um, completions then. Remind um, our viewers again. Sure. I mean, in terms of, uh, just to sort of carry on from my last point in terms of that pound per square foot, obviously we're right next door to, um, you know, Canary Wharf where, you know, developments are currently selling sort of 1,500 pounds per square foot. We're also in a zone two location with excellent access to all the professionals uh, that we are talking about as well as the universities, etc. Uh, but if you compare to a zone two location in the West, um, it would be significantly more expensive. You'd be looking up around £1,400 per square foot. Um, in terms of the completion, uh, our first completions here at Evergreen Point will start from Q3, sorry, Q4 2023 uh, to Q1 2024. That's good. Um, there is someone asking about promotions. Is there any promotions um, up uh, for these projects? For this project, yeah. Um, look, I mean, we, we, we treat each individual separately, so um, please arrange a, a meeting with the Knight Frank or JLL team um, so we can discuss in further detail for each individual. But yes, there are. That's exciting to know. Um, okay, so I think that is all the time that we have today, unfortunately. We hope that we have interest you in London property investment. Uh, the theme for London Housing Indeed has been on re regeneration master plan and we are so excited to collectively bring 12 Trees Park to you. Our Singapore launch will take place next week uh, from the 13th to the 16th of August 2020 at the Barclay um, Singapore office and please reach out to your JLL or Knight Frank representative for your private consultation. On behalf of JLL, Knight Frank and Barclay Group, thank you so much for your time and we hope to see you soon.